Thank you, sir. Our next speaker is Mr. Wu Kuo Miang, member Myanmar Institute of Strategic and International Studies, Myanmar. Good morning, everyone. Excellencies, spiritual masters, distinguished guests, distinguished delegates, members of the academia, observers, and friends of Dharma. It is a great privilege for me to be given this opportunity to speak at this August gathering of spiritual leaders, leaders from government, development professionals working in the field of reconciliation and peace building and members of the academia. I have been asked to speak about conflict avoidance and environmental consciousness. Both of these topics are very dear to my heart. Conflict avoidance <clears throat> falls under the rubric of peace building. I have been recently appointed to become a member of the advisory board of the AIPR, which stands for ASEAN Institute for Peace and Reconciliation. So I think it is logical and fortunate for me to be discussing about these two very important topics. Conflicts have been with us since the dawn of civilization. In the Stone Age, there were no modern weapons, so conflicts were settled by clubs, sticks, and spears. Man, in his very nature, is not a perfect being, although he has very good opportunities to improve himself spiritually, socially, and economically. As a Buddhist from the Theravada tradition, <clears throat> I propose to base my discussions from the Buddhist point of view. However, this does not mean that I will be following a narrow and dogmatic approach. My personal belief is that all the major belief systems, such as Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, Judaism, all teach humankind to be good, generous, and how to practice meditation. It is a fact that scholars and religious leaders who are gathered here are more learned than me in the scriptures of their respective religions. In my humble opinion, I think the most important thing that I should say to this gathering is, if you are looking for a solution to the age-old question of how to avoid conflicts, you have come to the right country, Myanmar. Myanmar has been called the land of pagodas, and rightly so. In Myanmar, we have countless numbers of pagodas dotted all over the country. The Myanmar people not only support the Sanghas, who are regarded as the sons of the Buddha, but practice meditation, mitta in Pali and Mita in the Burmese language, in their daily lives. Not only that, they follow the teachings of the Buddha in their daily lives. Every week you will see a lot of elderly and young Myanmar people going to the mo monasteries to take the precepts. So I think it is fitting and proper for Myanmar to share the practice of Vipassana meditation, or as some call it, insight meditation, and loving-kindness meditation as a means of reducing ill will and anger so as to avoid conflicts. So this morning I not only talk about conflict avoidance but 
also give a solution. Before returning to my homeland after staying about 20 years in the United States, I made a posting on the internet on the topic of loving kindness meditation. For historical purposes, let me quote from that posting dated 11th November 2011. Our country is a Buddhist country and most of the people have heard of Pyamazotaya or Brahma Vihara. It is called Brahma Vihara because the four types of consciousness, namely Mita, Karuna, Murita, Upekha, and I call these vibrations. These conscious, consciousness is a vibration. Are the mental states where the Brahmas keep their mind. According to Buddhist mythology, we have 20 planes of Brahma celestial beings. And all these Brahma celestial beings, we are told, are contemplating and meditating on loving kindness 24 7. That is why they live so long. For our country to get out of this endless cycle of hatred, mistrust, greed for power, suspicion, and lack of confidence in each other, we need to practice the four Brahma Vihara. By practicing the spreading of Mitta vibrations, by feeling happy when others succeed, by feeling compassion for those who are suffering, and by practicing the mental state of Upekha, or equanimity, we will be able to achieve reconciliation. Please invite your friend to join this forum so that we have more people discussing this topic of reconciliation and national reconciliation. From this forum, I urge all Myanmar citizens to recite the Mita Sota in every ward, village, township, district, and state. The more we send Mita vibrations, the more we will be able to act as a good catalyst for the success of this quote-unquote secret talks taking place between Do Aung San Suu Kyi and the SPDC, or the State Peace and Development Council. There is no time to lose, the time is now. And in this year, 2017, uh, the peace process is going on in Myanmar, and I think we need more of a loving-kindness meditation all over the country in Myanmar. In my opinion, what Myanmar can offer is none other than the wisdom of the Buddha as enunciated in the Abhidhamma or the profound teachings. In this great book, there is a section on Patana or in the Burmese language Patan, which may be roughly translated as cause and effect, Pipya in the Burmese language. According to the Buddhist teachings, there are 24 causal relations, Bodhisattva In Pali, it is called Bodhisattva The very first of these 24 causal relations, in Myanmar, a lot of people recite He Tu Ramna Pyesyoa without understanding the meaning. He Tu is one of the root causes. There are six mental states under He Tu. Loba dosa moha, aloba adosa amoha. So first is loba greed, dosa anger, moha is ignorance, and aloba is absence of greed, adosa is absence of anger, and amoha is absence of ignorance, which means wisdom. I'm sure all of you will, would agree with me that the cause of all types of conflicts, big or small, are caused by the three root causes, namely greed, anger, and ignorance. Let me expand on this a little. In world history, we have had two world wars. We cannot afford to have a third world war. If that happens, it would be the end of civilization as we know it. If we study the history of individual nations also, we have seen many battles within nations and among different ethnic races. If we look at the root cause of all these conflicts, we find that the causes are greed, anger, and ignorance or absence of knowledge, or a combination of all three. 
Sometimes nations go to war based on ideology or the belief that the ideology of one's own country was superior compared to the other. The Cold War is a good example during which period the world was divided into two opposing blocs, the free world led by the United States and the communist bloc led by the Soviet Union. Sometimes it may be to grab land and resources. This was what happened during the colonial period. During this period, the countries of Europe and Great Britain rushed to conquer the countries of Asia and Africa. This is a perfect example of conflicts that have greed as the root cause. Sometimes nations go to war for the sake of religion <coughs> and in the name of religion. <coughs> Excuse me. A good example of this type of conflict is the War of the Crusades. During this period, the Christian kings fought against the nations who profess Islam. As I have a time limit of 10 minutes, I will explain as briefly as possible a solution to the problems of conflicts born out of greed, anger, and ignorance, and also how to promote environmental consciousness. First of all, let me touch upon conflict avoidance. I would like to propose that at the end of this conference, when we draft the declaration of this conference, these two proposals, which I will explain right now, be added as the two main action items of the draft declaration. Proposal one, I believe in countries, and in fact all the countries of the world, urge their respective governments to formulate a national action plan for reconciliation and peace. Under this action plan, what I add, what I propose, is to add one activity, doing mitta, loving kindness meditation at the village and ward level at least twice a month. We have been doing loving kindness meditation in Myanmar for many years in different forms. However, the idea is for people to gather together and do meditation in one place so that each individual may feel the peace of Mitta. You cannot see, but you can feel. We cannot see Mitta, but we can certainly feel it. Even animals can feel the loving kindness vibrations of Mitta. When I was working at the United Nations Development Program, we had an inside meditation group where we discussed meditation and also loving kindness meditation. The way to do this properly is for participants to all sit together with eyes closed and recite in their minds, may I be well and happy. So you have to send Mitta vibrations to yourself first, not to your enemies. It is important to send loving kindness vibrations to oneself first. Then we gradually extend this circle to those who are present <coughs> at the meditation session, family members, friends, all the people in the town, wards, villages, states, region, the whole country. <coughs> if we wish to send loving kindness vibrations to others, we say, may all my friends be well and happy. Do I have more time? No, thank you. At the United Nations, we send loving kindness vibrations to all citizens of the United States of America. And we send Mita vibrations to all countries in the world, including Myanmar, when I was there. On the topic of environmental consciousness, I wish to say that this concept is not new for the people of Myanmar. Among the wisdom traditions, or the Vija traditions of the Myanmar people, and many of the ethnic races who reside in Myanmar, the idea of environmental conservation is ingrained in their hearts. So, um, since the time is up, I would like to end this um, talk by chanting. Uh, this comes from the Hindu tradition. 
uh, the, and it also occurs in Tibetan uh, tradition, the word Om. So let me chant this uh, vibration to close this session. And this is a way of bringing in the peace of all these uh, Brahma celestial beings and uh, you can call God or Allah or Brahm. Om. Mani. Padme. Thank you very much.